Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar, brought to you by TechStrong and Trilio. My name is Cody J. Brown, host of TechStrong Learning. We have an exciting presentation ahead, but before we begin, I have just a few housekeeping notes. First, today's session is being recorded, so if you miss any of today's session, the recording will be available on demand shortly after the webinar concludes. If you have any questions for our speaker today, we want you to submit those using the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. We'll save some time at the end of the program to try to address as many as we can, so be sure to send yours in early. Um, we also encourage you to use our chat function, which is also on the right side of your screen. This is where we want you to just engage with conversation with one another, add to the conversation that we are having up here on screen, or um, just let us know where you're calling in from. And finally, at the conclusion of today's webinar, we will have a drawing for four $25 Amazon gift cards. So stick around to see if you're one of our four lucky winners. Our topic today is protect and backup containerized apps in a multi-cluster environment. And I'm joined today by Ben Morrison, Solutions Architect at Trilio. Ben, it's my pleasure to turn the floor over to you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Cody. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, really appreciate all of your help today. As Cody said, feel free to uh, explore the chat, ask some questions in the Q&A, uh, whatever you'd like. As we go throughout the presentation, the demo today, I'll be hitting on some of those questions um, throughout you know, the, the talk to keep it interesting, but I'll hit the majority of those questions at the end. If I don't get to them, don't worry. Uh, we'll have time at the end to answer any of those questions. And so today I'm going to go through um, a bit of a talk about uh, Trilio and protecting those cloud native backup solutions. I'm going to show some slides here, but don't worry, I will quickly get over to a demo. So we'll be able to really see the ins and outs of Trilio instead of just sticking to the slide deck itself. So to start off here, can everyone see my screen okay? My slides? We sure can. Sounds great. Thank you, Cody. So as Cody said, my name is Ben Morrison. Um, I'm a solutions architect here at Trilio. Uh, I'm actually located in San Francisco, but I cover all of North America as well as uh, Asia Pacific and LATAM actually. And so today I'm gonna be talking to you about protecting and backing up those containerized apps, specifically in a multi-cluster environment. And so we'll hit on some of those major challenges of, of backing up and protecting uh, apps in a multi-cluster environment first. And then from there, we'll talk a bit more about uh, Trilio and how a backup solution like Trilio can solve some of these issues. So first and foremost, if you haven't gotten a chance to look at some of the new IDC reports from 2022, uh, there's a lot of amazing reports out there and we all really always appreciate all of the research that IDC does. And so with, from one of the more recent reports, we took a quote out of there um, that we felt described uh, their work very accurately in some of their predictions and predicting that uh, future landscape of, of Kubernetes. And so their prediction, one of their quotes they had here was that by 2024, net new production grade cloud native apps will increase to 70% from the 10% currently at of all apps in 2020. Thanks to microservices, containers, dynamic or orchestration, and DevOps. I know that's a lot packed into that quote there, but really what the gist of this is, is saying that because of the advantages of microservices and containers and that dynamic orchestration you get from Kubernetes, and because Kubernetes is so often used by DevOps teams specifically, as well as IT and, and all the other um, groups out there. Because of the advantages, they're predicting that these applications are going to grow from just 10% of all apps in this cloud native world uh, up to 70%. And so obviously, as that growth continues to happen over the next couple of years, there's going to be some challenges that take place that I'm sure it might already be on some of your minds. Um, and some of these you may not quite have thought of yet. So here are the top challenges that we found from IDC and working with them of um, top challenges that, that users will see when growing their applications in Kubernetes. 
just starting from the bottom here, we have disaster recovery, which would be one that you could imagine we would be talking about today, and we will talk about disaster recovery. But you know, backup and protecting those applications goes beyond the disaster recovery. I think you'll find from going over some of these challenges. Compliance and regulations is a big one, whether it's a compliance, internal compliance to back up your data or an external compliance or regulation to minimize how long you hold on to that data. There's a variety of different restrictions uh, out there that need to be adhered to. With this multi-cloud world, which specifically we'll be talking about with multi-clusters and multi-cloud, uh, there's oftentimes a lot of teams out there that maybe want to stick with one shop, stay all with one um, cloud in terms of where they put all of their workloads and data. And there's others that want multi-cloud. They don't want to have all of their eggs in one basket. They want to spread out that load across all the major clouds or multiple clouds out there. Another challenge we see in the market. Compatibility with existing IT, of course, like with any technology, especially when it comes to that infrastructure level, as we're moving over to containerization and microservices and Kubernetes, we can't make that transition overnight, right? You can't just snap your fingers and everything is brand new. Um, you have to make sure that your new components have compatibility with your existing IT operations and systems that you have. So we'll talk a bit about that today as well. Um, data management, obviously you wanna make sure you have organization and, and prevent any data loss or data leakage. Uh, same goes with data integrity and reliability, making sure you have accurate data there. And uh, lastly, security. Of course, we have this one at the top and I wanted to address this one last because this uh, tends to be uh, what I see as a solutions architect people asking the most about. Uh, as well as from some of these IDC reports we, we've looked into showing that security is one of the top concerns when it comes to Kubernetes and deploying containerized applications. So from here, the top level, high level challenges that we see. And so let's dig a little bit deeper into some of these challenges and specifically start to get into how Trilio or a backup solution can address some of these challenges. So first taking a look at the right-hand side, those six most important IT security priorities for organizations. This was uh, um, a poll that was done in the same uh, report from IDC that's just uh, from, from the past couple months in 2022. And so data loss, you can see, is the number one worry that, that teams had about their IT security priorities. Um, Obviously, putting stateful applications in, in Kubernetes has a lot of benefits, hence why we see people starting to move towards those stateful applications and having databases like MySQL or MongoDB in their clusters. Uh, but of course, they're worried about any sort of data loss that might happen from outages or, or any other leak that might occur. Security goes hand in hand with that data loss and leakage portion, especially when talking about ransomware. People worried about the security of their clouds and their applications, uh, and perhaps malicious actors gain a hold of those applications, um, you know, locking that data for ransom and then demanding some sort of ransom. Uh, and you'll see that a Trilio being a backup recovery solution helps with the uh, responsive nature of that aspect, the, the fix after some sort of uh, security breach occurs. So we'll keep talking about that as well. Um, additionally, privacy issues, going down the line here a little bit more, um, compliance, a big one on there as well that we talked about, um, identifying access management, of course, using RBAC and making sure your RBAC roles and permissions fit with your cluster roles and permissions, and then uh, just ongoing compliance monitoring as well. So focusing on some of those top two, especially the top two points here, I think is where Trilio and any backup recovery solution really fits in to uh, solving some of these issues. So now let's look over to the left here. Then on the left is what we and our team broke down from some of these reports as being the major factors that can cause some of these challenges, the major reasons why people uh, took these polls and said they were most worried about data loss and security. Ransomware, as I mentioned, is a top one up there. Uh, rent, when it comes to Trilio and being a backup recovery solution, uh, you'll see as we go through our demo that we do have uh, disaster recovery plans that you can make in the event of an outage happening or an accidental deletion or a ransomware attack. 
in the event of a ransomware attack and someone getting access of your data, locking it and saying, you don't get it back unless you pay us. Um, with Trilio, you can reco recover these backups into a different environment and have it securely securely have access to it once again when you do that recovery. You can also ensure that your backups will be secure with uh, something we call object locking. With your S3 buckets, you can make sure that you, you lock the data itself. You can ensure that it's encrypted both in transit and at rest. A variety of different um, capabilities, I would say, that we've built over the past year or so into our solution to make sure that you are having the best protection you can of those backups in the event of a disaster happening like ransomware. Cloud platform outages, like I mentioned before, this is also a reason why people tend to want to do multi-cloud environments instead of putting all of their eggs in one basket. If one of the major cloud providers has a major outage or has a major security breach, you wanna make sure that you have um, your data in different clouds, but how do you get that data? into different clouds? Do you have an easy means of moving it and replicating it between different clouds? That's another thing that Trilio can help with as well. Uh, when it comes to reliance on uh, default retention, this is getting the topic of, of compliance actually. So there is a lot of compliance out there that requires that you only keep data for a certain amount of time. And so relying on some default retention might mean that you're locked into something that's in compliance and might be out of compliance, but really you don't have any customization of, of your own uh, retention of the, that backup or that data. And so with Trilio, you'll see a common theme that we'll go over in terms of uh, customization uh, and, and personal compatibility with your system compatibility with this customization. You can design your retention policies to be however you wish based on what you might need. Data corruption would be a big one. Of course, in the event of data corruption, you want to make sure you can restore to any point in time where you and you last have a backup, which of course you can do with Trilio. And then lastly, um, that lack of access to historical data, losing data that you want to have access to. Again, maybe it could be for a compliance reason, having to prove that you're in compliance, or it might more likely be for your own personal records as well, keeping your data records for as long as you wish. So now that we've talked about some of those challenges, some of the statistics that we've seen and how the market is today, let's talk a little bit more about Trilio itself and, and specifically Trilio Vault for Kubernetes. We have three different solutions, but today we're talking about Trilio Vault for Kubernetes and what, what, what the main uh, components of TVK are and how they fit some of these challenges. Well, first and foremost, uh, we have the applica application centric piece of TVK. As I mentioned before, we talked a bit about having that customization. You'll notice that common theme here in terms of backing up and protecting your data however you wish to back it up. So with Trilio, you can back up all of the data, the metadata, and any other Kubernetes objects you need in your cluster. And you can select those, those pieces of data or objects based on a Helm chart used to deploy your application or workload an operator used to deploy that application or workload, labels used to organize those different objects specifically or data or metadata. And then lastly, you could also of course back up and restore an entire namespace if you wish to, which is what we will be doing in the demo today. When it comes to being native on Kubernetes, TVK, when we, when we designed the solution, we wanted to make the approach of having it as compatible and native to Kubernetes as possible. And what that means is that Trilio is actually packaged as an operator. And when it's deployed, it deploys custom resource definitions directly into your Kubernetes API. So this means that when you go into that terminal and you start exploring on your cluster using kubectl, you can literally use kubectl get backups, kubectl get restores to interact with your backups and restores and all your other backup management components of Trilio right with that Kubernetes API. Um, this is definitely a unique feature of Trilio. There's no other solutions out there that actually deploy their CRDs right into that Kubernetes API. And beyond the convenience of that CLI, if you're a terminal user, uh, having, that, having that integration with that API also means it's a lot easier for automation of your backups themselves and API management. You're not going to have to worry about managing another API with Trilio because those CRDs will be right into the Kubernetes API. 
talking about uh, Trulio being an enterprise class solution and that ecosystem tooling, again, getting into customization and scaling specifically, uh, we have we have a variety of, of capabilities, some of which being our hooks, restore transforms and policies, all of which we'll talk about more today. Uh, hooks are used for before and after a backup occurs or before a restore occurs. You can put in these pre and post scripts to essentially uh, have application consistency with your uh, backup process and the database and your stateful data that you might be wanting to back up. Some, some databases require that you have these hooks to make sure the, the application is in a stable state, not all, but sometimes that is required. And so you can easily add in hooks through Trilio, whether it's through the UI or through um, the CLI in YAML file specifically. Restore transforms, we'll get to see that today. Moving an application from one cluster to another and actually changing the data itself of the application before it's restored into a new cluster to again, make sure you have that appropriate application consistency across your different clusters. We'll talk about policies, whether they be retention or scheduling policies. And then getting into uh, ecosystem tooling, we won't be looking at any third-party tools today, but just to give you an idea, uh, because Trilio is integrated right into that Kubernetes API, that means that you can easily integrate Trilio into uh, third-party tools like Prometheus or Grafana or FluentD would be another one for logging. Those are the three most common that we see users using with Trilio. And so essentially this means that any third-party tool out there that interacts directly with the Kubernetes API, you can connect to Trilio and interact with Trilio however you wish, really customizing and integrating Trilio into your own systems. When we're talking about infrastructure compatibility and certifications, um, the only re system requirement we have for Trilio is to use a CSI driver with snapshotting functionality. So if you're interested in Trilio by the end of this, uh, that's something that uh, be sure to reach out to myself or someone on my team and talk about to make sure that you have that CSI driver with snapshotting functionality. Uh, but beyond that, we when Trilio takes a backup of an application and backs it up and stores it into uh, a bucket outside of the cluster itself, you can use either S3, uh, any S3 compatible storage, NFS or Azure Blob to store that data into. Beyond those infrastructure compatibilities, uh, you're able to use Trilio in any cloud uh, as long as it's CNCF certified in any distribution, as long as it's CNCF certified. Specifically talking about certifications, since we're here, um, we do have a few different certifications, which just means that we went to these distributions specifically and said, what do we need to do in terms of mostly security to make sure that we are a certified operator with you, the organization or distribution. And so here you can see uh, Red Hat, IBM, Rancher, and VMware are all four different examples of certifications that we do have. Next here, we have the easy to try and install. Uh, you can use Trilio for free, actually, for any cluster that is 10 nodes or less or 20 CPU or less, whichever one comes first there. And beyond that, you can uh, get an enterprise license to get 24-7, 365 support of Trilio. And then lastly, of course, we have the management console, our user interface that we've made. Um, as I mentioned before, you can use Trilio with uh, Grafana if you want to make a customized dashboard, or you can simply automate Trilio and use YAML files. But if you prefer to get in there and see uh, the UI itself when managing your backups and restores, we do have this management console that we'll show today. And here you'll be able to see the easy click-driven workflows. Uh, we try to make it as intuitive as possible to keep that customization aspect, making your backup policies and plans exactly as you want, while also making it as easy to use as possible. So from here, I'll go ahead and stop for a second. I know I've been talking for a little bit uh, and see if there are any questions in the chat that we wanna cover uh, before I get into the demo itself. So any questions in the chat based on anything I've just talked about, um, feel free to ask them now and I can answer them. And after that, I will get into the demo. And so as we're waiting here, if you do have some questions that you're that you're typing in, just to give a little overview for this demo, I'm going to be using an RKE cluster in a K3S cluster. 
And with these two clusters, I'm gonna show a little bit of how to create and manage your backups and your backup plans through Trilio. I'm gonna show how to make a disaster recovery plan with our disaster recovery planning tool. And lastly, I will show also a cross cluster application migration. Essentially, I will be, use, be moving a, um, a MySQL application, so a stateful application from this K3S cluster, that's a single node, onto my RKE cluster, which is a three node cluster. I wanted to do it this way for the talk today because I felt like it was relevant in terms of talking about some of that data leak leakage and security and and um, application stability and any outages. Because if you imagine if you have a K3S cluster, which is a single node, it's a lot more vulnerable to possibly go down. It's a lot easier for that one node to accidentally go down as opposed to RKE with three, one goes down, as we all know, the way Trilio works, or excuse me, the way Kubernetes works, it spreads out the workload to the other three. Um, so from here, we'll be doing that migration from K3S to RKE. So I'll stop now just for a second. Are there any questions in the uh, Q&A or in the chat at all yet, Cody? If not, that's totally fine. I just want to check. I'm not seeing any at the moment. Okay. Sounds good. I'll keep going along there then. Hopefully that means I've answered all the questions. And uh, don't be shy if you do have anything you want to ask here today. Oops. Go back. Okay, switching over here. So before we get into the management console itself, I just want to show a bit of the two clusters I'm working on. Here I'm just in Lens, uh, looking at these two different clusters. So first I have this single node K3S, which as I mentioned is where my MySQL application is sitting. So real quickly, uh, I'll do a sort of the get nodes, just so we can take a look at that single node itself. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Stefan, was able to spin this up for us today. So you'll see his name on some of the nodes here. So here, just one node made um, 28 days ago. If we do a get all in the uh, demo and namespace I have here, we'll see a MySQL application running. So this MySQL application was just deployed yesterday. You'll see here there's three different front end pods and then one back end MySQL pod all up and running and healthy. We have two different services here, uh, front end service and a back end MySQL service. And we have our deployments as well um, for the front end and the back end, the replica sets three out of three, everything is good to go. And we're also gonna look, take a look at the uh, PVC that we have as well. So it looks like we also have a MySQL uh, persistent volume claim, which is bound. It's good to go and is using the storage class of CSI host path storage class. If we take a look here to go a little bit deeper, just to make sure, we're going to do a kubectl get storage class. It looks like there are two different storage classes here, but we're using the CSI host path storage class. So from here, as I've talked to up to this point, with Trilio, you can customize whatever objects, whatever data, whatever metadata you want to back up but you probably want to back up everything that has to do with one application. So when you restore it, there's no issues that are occurring. So when I did the backup for this application in this single node cluster, I decided to back up this entire namespace, this Ben demo namespace. So I know that I have all of my backend and front end, I have all my services ready to go, but I do know that my storage class, CSI host path, is different from this, the cluster I want to restore it into. So this PVC, if I restored it exactly as is, I'm gonna have some issues. The application's not gonna be compatible with my new cluster when I do that migration itself. So from this point then, let's go ahead and take a look at that RKE cluster. So I know my application is sitting in my single node and now I'm in this cluster RKE. So this cluster is gonna be my three node cluster make sure everything is good, all right? They're all three ready to go. Stefan also spun this one up for us, so which was excellent. And we have three different clusters, uh, all which were made just uh, two days ago, it looks like here. So looking at these, I'm gonna take a look at um, my storage class that I have. So in this RKE cluster, I actually am using Longhorn. So I don't have a host path storage class, instead I have Longhorn. Uh, which does have that snapshotting capability is excellent to be used with Trilio. 
And so I know that if I want to restore an application into this cluster, I don't have host path, I need to use Longhorn instead. So we'll keep that in mind when we get to the end of the demo, I'll be messing around with some transforms to make this restore happen smoothly. Now, just to show you that my MySQL application is not running here, I'll do a get all of my restore namespace. So here in this RKE cluster, Ben restore is where we're restoring into. Hopefully as long as I did my homework, Yep, looks like we're all good to go here. So um, the only thing you see in this cluster here is my uh, Stefan Trilio S3 bucket browser. And what that is, is that's a target browser. The S3 bucket is the target where we're putting our backups into. And so for an order for these uh, clusters and namespaces to talk to that target, to get backups and pull them out of that S3 bucket, and restore them into the cluster, we have to have one little deployment of a target browser in the namespace itself. So that's why you see this, this one pod, one service, and one deployment here. Beyond that, as you can see, there's no um, there's no MySQL application. We'll do a quick uh, get PVC of this namespace as well, and we'll see that there's also no persistent volumes in this namespace. So now that we have seen the two clusters, Let's go ahead and go into the main event. We'll take a look at the management console itself. Oh, excuse me. There we go. So for here, I'm just gonna log into my cluster using a YAML file, or excuse me, a cube config file, which is written in YAML format. Now, obviously we didn't wanna make this the only way to log into clusters themselves. Uh, you have this consistency and reliability of knowing that uh, any cluster, uh, no matter the distribution, if it's GKE, uh, AWS, whatever it may be, you can log in to Trilio using the kubeconfig file of that cluster itself. But beyond that, you can also set up any um, uh, OIDC provider or any LDAP or any single sign-on, like for example, Google single sign-on to be compatible with Trilio as well. So below this sign-in, we don't have it set up on this one today, but if you want, you can add in um, a GitHub login, you can add an LDAP, you can add in a Google sign-in, like I said, any of those customizations you can make here as well. But today we'll just log in using that cube config. And now we'll take a look here and see that this is the first screen that we see when we first log in to TVK. So I'll start on the left and walk through to the right to show everything going on here so you guys have full understanding. First off, we're currently in the Home tab, which is where we have all of our backups and restores. This is essentially where you wanna to go to to start a backup process. This is where you can make those backup plans and see a little bit of your monitoring as well in terms of any backups or restores that have occurred, any that are available or any that might have failed. You can have a Valero integration. If you uh, have used Valero in the past because you were getting started with backup and restore and you want to use the free version, uh, an open source version, you might've used Valero to get started. And now maybe after using Valero for a bit, you've noticed that it has some issues with scaling, it doesn't have the best um, customization, uh, and it doesn't have any sort of UI. It's kind of bare bones, you know, Valero is a great solution, but it's the open source free version, you know? So maybe you want to start moving to a more premium solution. If you have Valero already installed in that cluster and you have Trilio and installed Trilio in that same cluster, Trilio here will actually automatically find your instance of Valero and show any backups and restores that you've done with Valero right in this single pane of glass. So it makes it as easy as possible for you to have that transition occur. And there's actually nothing you have to do in terms of configuration on this end. It's all automatic once you install that TBK operator. Next, we have uh, resource management that we'll look into. This is where your backup plans are, your targets, which I've talked about a bit, where you store those backups to, uh, the hooks that I mentioned before, any policies like retention policies or scheduling policies, all of these are in that resource management tab. We'll take a look at some of those later. And then lastly, how we're gonna do that migration and where we're also gonna talk about disaster recovery is the disaster recovery tab. This is where you can make that DR plan for migrating an application from one cluster into another cluster. And once you have that plan built, then you can automatically kick it off um, and, and have, an, have 
essentially a one-click migration from one cluster to another. Here now we can see our cl uh, cluster navigation pane. We have our primary RKE cluster that we were just talking about before, and we have our single node K3S cluster. So same pane of glass, I can take a look at either one very seamlessly. Now, if you notice when I logged in, and you might see from the URL at the top, I'm logged into the RKE cluster. And what I did is I added in the S3 single node cluster into here by just simply adding in a new cluster. I added in the URL, the distribution type. Um, this is not a comprehensive list, by the way. Any CNCF certified distribution can be added in here. This is just uh, all the major distributions we wanted to add in. But I can select my distribution type, add in a kubeconfig file. Um, if it's maybe a GKE cluster, you can log in using Google credentials. You actually don't even have to use the kubeconfig file here. And once that's all configured, then your, uh, your cluster will be added in right below here. And you can, again, add in as many clusters as you need to, to have that multi-cluster management. Next, you can see all the different namespaces in my RKE primary cluster. So you, we saw before the bed and restore namespace. There's a few infrastructure namespaces like Cattle Fleet and Cattle System. And so here we can see uh, all of my namespaces and also see which ones are backed up and which ones are not. And if you might have caught an eye, if you were paying attention with that K3S cluster, you will have noticed that one of those namespaces was backed up. And so here we have no namespaces currently backed up. No backups have occurred and no restores have occurred. So this is a pretty new cluster. With my K3S cluster, on the other hand, I have had a backup occur. So here we can see this green honeycomb of my Ben demo namespace, indicating that a backup has occurred and it was in fact successful and it's available to be restored. Going a little bit deeper beyond the namespaces, we can also see the um, individual namespace level as well. And so here you can see, let me find a better example. Here we go, we'll go to this Longhorn system. So here, this Longhorn system, this is actually where that um, CSI driver was deployed. And again, any of these components you can back up if you wish to. But here we can see uh, labels, helm operator objects, and backup plans themselves. For the labels themselves, looks like because this is new, there might not be any new labels in there. So I do apologize for that one, but any labels you have in a certain namespace will be populated here that you can then back up based on the label itself. For Helm charts and operators, you can see we have a Helm and an operator deployed in this namespace. And so here, TVK is showing me these Helms and operators. And from here, I can immediately create a backup if I wish to. I'll actually go ahead and get to that later. I'll keep walking through these quickly. Next, I can also look at the objects as well. I can go one level deeper to look at each individual object that I might want to back up. And so here, like I was about to do with that RKE um, Helm chart. Oh, there we go. Here, I'll just go ahead and show here. So we have the objects, uh, Helm operator, and then labels. If for any of those or for the namespaces, I wanted to start to kick off a backup, I simply select any of those um, different categories I've listed, any object, any namespace, and I do a create backup. From here, I'm gonna create a backup plan. So simply name the backup plan. I select what target I want to backup that data into. And so here we have uh, this S3 target that I'm going to use. And from here, I can add in any encryption secrets in case I want to encrypt my backups themselves, I can add in hooks, I can add in those scheduling policies or those retention policies. So all of these resources, when you want to create them, you can do so in the wizard as you go along creating that backup itself. You don't have to worry about management of creating these different resources. We want to make sure it's as easy as possible to go through and customize your plan exactly as you want, right when you want to make that backup itself. So for now, I'm not going to kick off that backup plan, but I will go into my K3S cluster and show you the backup that I did before of my Ben demo namespace. So here you can see this backup was successfully done. Here we can see the size of the backup itself, the plan that was used, Ben demo backup plan. The target, same target as before, Stefan Trilio S3 bucket. And we can see that it was a full backup. Uh, I can restore it right here if I wanted to into this exact same cluster. But for now, I just want to look at, oh, excuse me, 
For now, I want to look at the uh, status log. So here I can see the status log that occurred when I did do this backup. We had a metadata snapshot, a data snapshot, a data upload, and then a metadata upload. And as you can see, this MySQL application only took three minutes, excuse me, four minutes, four minutes to fully back up and be, um, be stored into that S3 bucket. I can also go even deeper here, looking at the exact metadata that I backed up itself. So for example, if I wanna look at a service, I can view the details and see here through TVK that yes, I did in fact back up the service. And this is the name of the service that I backed up, going all the way into viewing the actual YAML file if I wanted to. So really it adds a lot of depth to your backups. You can, you can get very, very granular if you wish to in this, uh, in this uh, UI, even download the YAML file if you wish to. But now anyways, getting back out of here, We'll leave this section and um, and look a bit at the, we won't get the restore points yet. So from here, well, then we can also look at the backups themselves. There's only one backup in here, but I'm gonna expand out to take a look. And from here, you could see uh, any failed, any in progress and any available backups be populated here as well. Now, moving on, I'll get into that resource management section. So as I mentioned before, you have your um, application you want to back up. You have that MySQL application and that Ben demo namespace. You create a backup plan of that namespace itself and kicked off the backup. But now you're thinking about all of the resources that you created. Where are they? And how can you manage those resources themselves? So here, staying in that Ben demo, I can then see um, any of the backup plans, hooks, policies, or targets associated with this namespace. I'll actually switch back over to my primary. So in that, excuse me, I want to be in the Ben demo, in the backup. Here we go. Stay in the Ben demo namespace. So we just had to take, we just took a look at that backup plan itself. Um, we can see here that if we wanted to, we could add in more scheduling policies right in here. But I want to show this section if I wanted to create a hook, for example, just from scratch. So if I wanted to create an example hook, I can customize how many times that hook is attempted in the um, timeout as well of this hook. And beyond this, I can just simply add in an example pre-command for before the backup actually occurs. And then also an, an example uh, post command. So again, you can customize these however you wish. And once they are saved, you have them for forever. You can keep reusing these hooks in different backup plans, however you wish. For retention policies, here I can decide how long I want to keep a certain backup in that S3 bucket. We talked a little bit before about compliance and how sometimes you can only keep backups for a certain amount of time. So let's say we want to create a yearly uh, retention policy. We don't want to keep uh, any more than five of the most recent backups every year. So in January, we're going to go, we're going to create this policy so that every uh, January, only the five most recent backups are going to be kept and all the other backups will be then removed. This is a yearly example. And then once that retention policy is created, I can keep reusing that yearly policy for any of my other backup plans I wish. Next, we'll look at scheduling policies quickly here. We'll do a daily example. How about that? Daily backups are pretty common. And so we're going to say at midnight every single day, we want to do a backup. So here that I can add in this daily backup, uh, scheduling policy backup example to my uh, backup plan. And from there, backups can happen every single day. And then lastly, and here what I really want to show in this uh, resource management tab is the target itself. So here, this is an AWS S3 target. As I mentioned before, you can do NFS or object store, and then as well as Azure Blob in the newest version, you can have access to Azure Blob and store your backups there. From here, you just add in all the credentials of your backup, or excuse me, of your target itself, add in a secret, and you can choose uh, two different important components I want to point out here. One would be object locking. If you want to have uh, object locking uh, and immutability with your S3 target, you can decide to enable that here right through your uh, TVK UI. And you can also do something called browsing. Remember before I showed out those pods in the, um, in the different namespaces that said Stefan Trilio S3 bucket. 
that was the target browsing pods deployed into those namespaces. So here, this target is enabled, which means I can go ahead and launch this target browser. And so now what we're looking at here is all of the backups that are stored in this target. So these backups by no means are from this cluster I'm using. They're probably from a variety of different clusters here. So we have just a lot of different examples, some MySQL, uh, looks like one that was done AWS. Here's one, the Ben demo backup plan. That's the one we saw before. And this is the backup plan we'll actually be restoring today. And it looks like some K3S backups as well. So here, the idea of that target browser means that if I am currently in a certain cluster and I have access to this target, I might want to restore a backup plan from a cluster that no longer exists, hence why I might want to restore that backup. And so here I can go into the target browser, select any one of these backup plans, and then kick off that restore process itself to restore it into my current cluster itself. For now, we're not going to go about it this way, though. Instead, we're going to do the disaster recovery method. So here we're um, we're in this K3S node. Uh, this is where our uh, our MySQL application is. Remember, and as I said before, I want to migrate that application into my RKE cluster. So let's go ahead and create a new disaster recovery plan to make that migration occur. So here, just like before, I'm gonna select my target. And now I can see all these uh, instances of all these different clusters. Now, instead of just seeing all the backup plans listed in one, I now can see the UIDs of the clusters themselves if I want to quickly look up what cluster I want to restore into. I, though, for today, know that I want to restore this Ben demo backup plan from my Ben demo namespace sitting on this cluster here, which is the K3S cluster. And so I'm simply going to select that backup plan. I can select multiple backup plans, I'll note as well. You can easily select multiple if you wish to do uh, multiple re restores in one DR plan. But for today, I'm just going to do that Ben demo backup plan. From here, I can then name the restore itself. I'm going to decide that I want to restore into my Ben restore namespaces where no applications were sitting. I can select a few different flags here to customize that restore process. Um, these top three, I think, are the most relevant. So here, I already have the skip if already exists flag selected, which means, for example, if I try to restore my MySQL app, and maybe one of the objects of that application is already in my Ben Restore namespace. Maybe it's left over there from the last time I did a demo, or um, a more relevant case, maybe it's there from the last time you were doing testing in a, in a testing environment, and you didn't fully remove. Uh, your application objects. So if that is the case, I can do skip if already exists and Trilio will know not to make a duplicate of any certain resource or object that's already in that namespace. I can alternatively also do patch if already exists. If there is an object already sitting there, Trilio can have it removed and then update it with a new version of that object from the resource itself. And then lastly, another one I want to point out is that omit metadata. If I want to omit certain pieces of metadata, I can also select this flag as well. From here, um, like I said before, remember, we have that storage class issue. I want to do this restore, but I need to make sure that the application is using Longhorn when it's restored into my RKE cluster and not host path that it was using in the K3S cluster. So from here, I want to do a transform, or as we like to call it, transformative restore is what we're going to end up doing. So I can select any of my different objects in this backup itself. These are all the objects that are in this backup. And I know that I want to change the persistent volume claim to make sure that the uh, PV is connecting to the right storage class here. So from here, I am going to add in the path itself of the uh, of, of what I want to change. I'm selecting this spec storage class name path which is in the YAML file of this persistent volume claim. So Trilio is literally going into the YAML file as the restore happens and is going to change that value of the storage class name in the file itself when the restore occurs. From then, I, there I then want to do um, Longhorn is the storage class value I want to change it to. So it was host path. It's now going to be 
uh, Longhorn. I'm going to make sure I select the right object here. My MySQL PV claim is the object that I want to edit. And I'll just make this T1 for transform one. So we're now going to be replacing that storage class value and we have the appropriate path in there. Go ahead and hit apply. So it looks like it was all formatted correctly and add that in. And so now there's one other issue I have. And that you might have noticed is the storage class was also sitting here in this backup itself. Because I backed up the entire namespace, what Trulio does is it looks at any of the applications in that namespace. And if there's a cluster scoped resource like storage classes that is needed by an application in my namespace, it's also going to back up that storage class. And so I don't want to bring in my host path storage class. I want to make sure that it stays in K3S and does not come into RKE. So I'm going to exclude that storage class. So now it looks like we're all set up and ready to go. Uh, hopefully I fill all this out correctly. We'll find out here and I'm gonna kick off that restore process. So we're gonna see validation and then a restore of the data and the metadata occurring in here. Uh, I'll stop one more time to see if there are any questions in that q and I'm figuring there might not be since it's been a little quiet, but um, Cody, you mind checking one more time to see if there's any questions in that q and from anything we covered in the demo so far today? Yeah, so we've actually received, I think, two questions. Um, so uh, this first one reads, is Trilio itself deployed on a single slash multi-cloud or uses any in-house server? Um, just wanted to check if any cloud outage will also affect Trilio itself. Great question. So Trilio is deployed on every cluster that you want to do backups and restores to and from. So to say that another way, my two clusters I have today are KE and K3S. There's an instance of Trilio deployed on RKE, and there's an instance deployed on K3S. Um, now, the way Trilio works, because it's an operator, we it's, it's agentless, and so it takes up as minimal resources as possible. Uh, Trilio spins up pods to do backups and resource and spins back down to minimize how much uh, workload essentially it takes up. Uh, but to answer your question in terms of outages, with, as long as you have Trilio running on a cluster itself, then you can restore and back up applications to and from that cluster itself. So let's say, for example, one of your clusters goes down, it's completely destroyed. Then what you would want to do would be to restore and, and essentially spin back up a new cluster because it's so easy to do so with RKE or any other distribution out there. Quickly spin up a new cluster exactly as you had it before and bring in Trilio into that cluster immediately, have that automatically installed into your cluster. From there, you can restore everything else. Trilio will allow you to have access to that target, that S3 bucket, and all of the applications you had before in your cluster. You can repopulate your cluster with everything you had before in any given point in time. Awesome, and I think Thanks. that um, the other question we can hold off until the end. Okay. Sounds great, Cody, thank you. So here, as you just saw, the restore completed. We had this validation process occur, which just took 20 seconds here. We had a data restore occur, uh, and then we had the uh, metadata restore actually occur after the data itself happened. So all in all, that restore process was very quick, which is excellent to see. It was only, um, it was less than two minutes. It was a minute and a half, actually, which is amazing. So. Now that we have that, we can see that that um, DR was uh, successfully completed. We execute that DR plan. We'll go back and look at our RKE cluster. So here in our primary cluster, we can now see one of a restore has been successfully completed. So we can see the details of that restore here if we wish to. Looking at the summary itself, the size that was restored, you'll notice it was slightly smaller than the backup because we removed that storage class. So it was actually a little bit smaller than the backup itself. And then again, all of the metadata that we had restored as well. And now we'll switch over to Lens one more time, just to see this final uh, output. So here we are in our RKE cluster. Clean this up a little bit. We'll do a get all of that Ben restore namespace, which we saw before had nothing in it. And now we can see, uh, just like in our K3S cluster, our MySQL application is successfully up and running. We have our three front ends, that back end, all of which were deployed about two minutes ago. Our services are both there. Our deployments are both there, which is excellent. 
Um, and then we'll take a look at that PVC as well. So it looks like that PVC is also there. And here we have it uh, connected to Longhorn. As we can remember in that K3S um, right here, that persistent volume claim was connected to host path. So it looks like our transform worked, our cluster is up and running and is successfully using our uh, new storage class as well. So from there, that actually concludes the demo I wanted to show today. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, get to any questions that we want to talk about. And so I know there's one other question there, Cody, so we can uh, go ahead and cover those now if you wish. Awesome. So this first question reads, um, what if CSI has no snapshot capabilities? That's a great question. So that is the, the only hardware requirement we do have. Um, or not hardware, but the only system requirement that we do have with Trilio is we do require a CSI driver with snapshotting functionality. If you don't have snapshotting on your CSI, uh, I encourage you to uh, look for some other options out there. It's very easy to get an updated CSI driver with snapshotting. Uh, all the major pro cloud providers have snapshotting at this point. And so very likely if you update your CSI driver to the newest version, um, you might have uh, snapshotting. So I encourage you to take a look at that. If there is not snapshotting, you can still use Trilio to back up stateless applications. So if you just want to back up all that metadata and all the objects themselves, you can still do that. Uh, but any persistent volumes or any actual data of those stateful applications, you will not be able to back up unless you have snapshotting. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm not seeing any more questions at this moment. So I'll let the audience know that this would be a perfect time to send in any last second questions that you might have. Um, I'm going to quickly announce our four Amazon gift card winners while we wait. Um, so this is for four $25 Amazon gift cards. Our first winner is Mike L. Our second winner is Hitesh K. Our third winner is Victory C. And our fourth winner is... Joachim F or Joachim F. So congratulations to the four of you. Keep an eye on your inbox to claim that gift card. And if you don't receive an email, just check your spam folder. So I'm um, looking through and not seeing any more questions. So Ben, I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor one last time in case you have uh, any closing remarks or anything you'd like to leave the audience with. You're, you're muted. Appreciate that. Thank you, Cody. Um, so appreciate everyone for coming here today. Hopefully you learned a bit about uh, disaster recovery and, and application backups of those cloud native applications. Um, if you want to learn more, I encourage you to take a look at Trilio.io, excuse me, uh, to take a look, bit, look more at TVK itself. Um, we have a lot of great documentation there as well. And I encourage you to try a free trial if you want to take a look at how you can properly backup and restore your applications. Uh, if you would like to learn more, please feel free to also reach out to myself. Uh, my email is ben.morrison, M-O-R-R-I-S-O-N, at trilio.io. I'll actually drop it in the chat really quickly here. And um, if you can't get a hold of me, feel free to reach out to anyone else at Trilio. And we'll be happy to answer any other questions that you may have about data protection. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Awesome, awesome. So a quick reminder that today's session was recorded. So if you missed any of our discussion or you just like to share it with someone you like, uh, the recording will be available shortly after the webinar concludes. You can also find the recording living on the DevOps website. Just visit devops.com slash webinars. So Ben, thank you so much for putting together this demo and this presentation and taking the time to share your expertise with us. Um, I'd like to thank Trilio for sponsoring today's webinar. And my final thanks goes to you, our audience. So thank you for being here with us today. Please take a moment to fill out our post-webinar survey, and we hope to see you at a future TechStrong Learning webinar. This is Cody J. Brown signing off.